All right, YouTube, welcome to my home. It is Thursday. It's been a weird week for me at Meineke Cinnaminson. Um, plenty of wholesale work, and that's why I do it, because it fills in the gaps for uh, when the retail customer isn't coming through the door and spending money. So I heard through the grapevine um, that my current Snap-on tool dealer um, who comes to my shop is getting out of the franchise. We didn't get too into specifics of it, and I guess that's okay for me to discuss it because I'm not giving up name, I'm not giving up a route. Um, but I will tell you, I've seen many tool dealers come and go, uh, and I've had two outstanding tool dealers um, with Snap-on. I've had a smoking hot blonde chick with Mac Tools in Cherry Hill 20 years ago. And like Val, who's a Snap-on tool dealer, I think if you have that sex appeal and look, um, I think most men would open their wallets for you just like they would at a strip club. So kudos to Val. She does a good job marketing herself, social media, presenting herself. She's a looker. But when it comes to a man in certain sales, I think you have a disadvantage, and especially with tools. Very dominant industry is auto repair, body and things like that. You see more women getting into it, but it's not like this is what they, you know, what women do. So, not that I'm saying anything bad. Sierra works for me, Rachel works for me, April works for me. Um, but I've had two outstanding dealers. Uh, one went bankrupt um, and I, I think he just made some bad decisions. Um, he had an excellent route and I think, you know, when you have when you're self-employed and you're doing well, you can't just piss all your money away. You have to put, you have to sam squirrel it away. We call it squirreling away, put away for bad times. Um, and I think when he seen the money that he was making versus when he was just a truck driver for the Snap On Tool Dealers, he was had a salary. It really wasn't his business, but he wanted it. And then when he got that up in income, becoming the owner of that truck. Um, that previous owner was making bank for 30 years. And I'm saying when this industry was thriving and you had seasoned mechanics in the bays and we lived and breathed Snap-on tools and on and on and on. Like my, my first real tools was Snap-on. You know, truck truck account and then an EC credit. Um, and I've seen many tool dealers come and go. I've been doing this for 30 years plus. So the one dealer, it's a shame if he didn't, run his business he ran it well and he was spending i think he was just overspending what he was doing and then he hit hard times with COVID. yes with COVID, and then i just didn't think it worked out for him anyway so he went bankrupt and then that that route went dry for four to five months which i was furious that snap on didn't step in sooner and come in there because i break snap on tools like i break toothpicks um and then finally, the new guy who's been probably a little over a year now, maybe two years he made it, um, that the route is just not producing what he needs uh, nor would it satisfy Snap-on from what I understand. I don't know the whole language of it. But today he told me, so today my tool dealer told me he's, he's done at the end of the year. Who? I can't say his name. Did you hear me? No, oh, Snap On Tool Dealer. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking. Yeah, so oh, Snap On Tool me. Dealers, you have extended, you have credit lines with. Uh, you can't get a credit line with any banks when you work with Snap On. Snap On is their credit line, and then you have your truck accounts, which is your cash flow. So that means you put products out, and then you're collecting money, you know, every week, or if the mechanic's short or whatever. So imagine if you had a hundred customers and ninety percent of them were short or didn't pay. So that becomes a problem, and, and that's you know a problem in our business. Where me, I'm an owner. We, the business helps pay for my tools. I just walk in and say, boom, 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 boom. I don't ask how much, how long, what's the terms. It's a different scenario for a guy like me versus a guy like a mechanic who's just coming into the business or a guy that's been around for a while. Um, I'm ultimately, ultimately paying for my tools, but my business is, my customers are paying for my tools. My paying for my updates or paying for the new tools that I need to fix their cars. Um, that's all part of being profitable. If there's no profit, I can't do this stuff. So 
he said that he's out, and I said, you know what? In my 30 plus years in this business, you are the best tool deal dealer I've ever dealt with. So when we first met, I was already furious about Snap On leaving us high and dry and me breaking tools like I break toothpicks. Um, and then finally, when we called Snap On, they said, oh, all right, we'll mail in your stuff and wait and all this other crap. It was, it was just completely BS how Snap On handles that situation. And I'm sure Snap On's, if Snap On doesn't evolve, right? You're going to be like Sears. So, and I said, it's the same, sir, that, you know, I appreciate you. When he first came to my store, I lost my mind. I swear I would never buy another Snap-on tool again. And this dude did everything in his power to win me over and show me the highest level of uh, compassion, salesmanship, um, human being, everything. And then months after me just ramming him with broken tools, uh... I went on his truck and I started purchasing again only because he was giving me top tier service. Yes, sir. No, sir. Broken, sir. Right away, sir. Have it next week, sir. Alpha repair, sir. No excuses. Even with the, the cordless fiasco, I'm sure he's kind of embarrassed by how many times I've sent out thousands and thousands of dollars worth of tools and having to pay $150 in repairs. It's, like I said, I'm done buying cordless Snap-on products. Sorry, Snap-on. You need to improve your products or give a better warranty if you want a customer like me customer like me so there's customers at different levels right you want customers who spend no different than what i want in my base i want customers who love their vehicles who love to maintain them and repair them i'm not interested in the customers who who, who, who have no interest in that no different than the tool truck guy he wants a customer that knows what he wants he wants to spend either cash credit or uh, ec with snap on well that pool of guys like me out here is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and there's not enough of us out in the field that newcomers coming into the field that are saying, I'm going to spend fifty, eighty thousand dollars on snap on tools. And this is going to be my career. At one time we used, not my center, we had three tool trucks coming in and out of the shop and I'm going back 1991, three different tool trucks. Snap on was my primary tool. Uh, Maco and Mac were in between that. And then you had seen Cornwall come around and they didn't last. But the dealers changed. So those years, those dealers made bank. You had shops full of mechanics that had been doing it for a while. Uh, vehicles weren't so complex. You didn't need quite the tools and technology you need today. Um, and plus the cost of Snap-on tools. I find value in majority of their products. Now, do I have some hoopty tools? Absolutely, I do. Uh, and he mentioned Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has a, a product line that is becoming very competitive with the premium line tools. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't be shocked if it's not Snap-on undercover in uh, Harbor Freight's tool section. Some of their stuff looks identical to what my Snap-on stuff is at a quarter of the price. And that's what happens when you have franchise fees attached to some of those things. Um, and a mobile truck and this and that and blah, 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 and tons of inventory. Or Harbor Freight, it's a, it's a box store. Um, their products probably come from all over the place. But I wouldn't be shocked if it's Snap-on uh, in disguise in Harbor Freight, just like Sears is in uh, Home Depot. What was I going with this? So it's a shame he's gone. Um, and I buy online stuff too, like... Trust me, I have my my share of Snap-on tools. I show them every day. There's certain jobs I just can't do without a Snap-on tool. And then there's certain tools that I can get by with that I use every day that I can get a few months out of that are 100% less the cost. Or if I need a specialty tool and I call the Snap-on guy, they don't ever have it. Like the GM62 fuel pump tool. Like, did I really need it? No, I could have winged it with a socket and did it that way. But I wanted the tool just so I... Everyone's doing the job right. They didn't have it. Chevy dealer won't sell you one. So I bought it online. Uh, Ford time and belt toolkit called a snap on guy today. And I don't have it. New tool, blah, blah, blah. Borrow it from another shop. I buy it. I buy it online. So online, and, and they're not the greatest products. I mean, I can do product reviews on tons of tools that I shred and destroy that you would think are top of the line. Right? I mean, yeah. I am hard on tools. 
I can't tell you how many. You should see the people at Harbor Freight when I bring on your flashlights. Sawzalls that I buy top tier sawzalls that I destroy in a year. Completely destroy. My my headlights from Harbor Freight. I buy them. I buy the extra warranty. I probably go through two of them a month. Cost me 10 bucks. It is what it is. I'm not waiting 30 days for Snap-on to, to replace a flashlight or fix a flashlight. That the warranty's less. So Snap-on's got major competition. The technicians out there today, I think, are thrifty, right? They're not willing to buy a $30,000 toolbox like myself and other guys out here. Or have $100,000 with a Snap-on tools in their box, paid for or not paid for. You know, three scan tools, four code readers, multiple multimeters, test lights, tap and die sets for everything. You know, like Caleb came to me and said, hey, do you have a Mini Cooper spark plug socket? I reach over to my toolbox and I point to it. It's hanging right up. You know why? Because if I need it, I buy it. I don't think that that's going on in these bays out here. And if they walk out into the Snap-on truck or a Matco or whatever, and they say, well, how much is this BMW spark plug socket? It's $90. Technician's like, what? 90 bucks. I have a Snap-on one. I own it. You know why? Because when I need it, I have to have it. But that's not how your average technician thinks. They probably walk over and say, hey, do you have it? Do you have it? Nobody in the shop has it. Guess what? They probably don't do the job. I'm sure that goes on in a lot of shops out here. Maybe that's why I see so much of the work that I do see because they're going someplace else. They're saying, we don't have the tool. We don't have the software. Our, our scan tool is not updated. We don't know anyone who can do that. Uh, ADOS systems, we don't know what that is. We don't know how to fix it. We're not trained in it. You know, I try and fix everything. But Snap-on's got their competition. Um, it's Harbor Freight. I'm going to call it an online world. Um, but like I said, you're not putting a Snap-on ratchet or a Mac, Mac Tools or a Maco ratchet up against Harbor Freight's best, best product, non-premium uh, line. Same thing with the wrenches. Um, Snap-on's got a fabulous product line. It is outrageous. If you have a good tool dealer, it's a great experience. And it's only so much that the tool dealer can do. I felt that my tool dealer has done above and beyond for me. Um, and my sourest taste is the cordless stuff. Uh, I will never buy another cordless Snap-on product ever again. I will go back to air. Um, they last longer uh, and more reliable, even though... It's a pain in the ass to drag an airline around. You know what? It's cheaper. I, I waste so much money in repairs on my cordless stuff. It's ridiculous. I could have went on a vacation to Mexico for what I've paid in repairs for my cordless stuff since it's come out. Um, but yeah, so I don't know how Snap-on's going to restructure. You're probably going to see it just like Maco and everyone else. If it's not a thriving auto repair or body shop community... You're going to see those guys dissipate. And, you know, I have a couple young guys that, you know, have some premium line stuff, but a majority of it is an icon or Harbor Freight uh, for the reason for price and quality. And, and they don't care if it breaks every week. They'll just go down the street and go in there and get it warranted or, and, and maybe buy something else for 5 or $10 or $20. Um, but there's just certain things that I just can't have. Um, I'll give you an example. I have their pneumatic fluid sucker, uh, the pump style hand, you know, hand pump style. And I have no problems with that. I bought their pneumatic one. Caleb was using it and it self-destructed because it got clogged and he left it on full vac and it broke. So I did buy the two year warranty on that. So all I have to do is send April up to Harbor Freight. Do I really need it? I liked it. You know, because sometimes it has its place. So, you know, I want to pump or do I want to vacuum? If I'm walking outside to a customer's car, I can bring the portable one out and just pump it like a hand pump. And if I'm in the shop, it's nice to have the pneumatic one. But the pneumatic one, grenade it because a technician was just letting it run on vac when the suction hose was clogged and it, it broke the plastic. So I have a warranty on it. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get another one for free as soon as I walk in. I'm going to pay another $10 for a warranty. Hassle-free warranties, flashlights. Destroy them, hassle-free warranty. Don't ask no questions, nothing. They know April by first name because she goes in there all the time for so many warranty repairs. Just a snap-on can't deliver. And they and they can't deliver the specialty side of it, too. And I'm prime example. Like the last two weeks, I tried to get specialty stuff. Snap-on don't have it. We don't have any other tool dealers that come to our shop. Um, we're not a big shop. and, and 
you know, like I said, I thought that I was at the end of my career of buying tools and I'm still buying tools because the business requires me to buy tools to evolve. And just like Snap-on, they have to evolve. Now, we don't do a lot of ADOS work now that we're seeing some of those vehicles come in. And it ain't cheap, people. You come in with a side mirror with ADOS or a windshield or a radar and backup cameras and sensors, you are paying. It is outrageously expensive. And you're paying for product and knowledge and experience on top of the equipment to, to fix that stuff. So we're just dabbling in that. So we fix it. You know, we learn, we evolve. Um, but yeah, Snap One's got their hands full. And I'm, and I'm sure if it sounds like I have a lot of shop owners and techs out there, I'm sure the owners have the best of the best in premium line equipment and probably don't dabble too much in Harbor Freight, just like myself. They have certain things that they use and they don't use. Like, I don't even have decent tools here. I have maybe like five or 10 snap on products here, and it might be a pair of cutters, a few pairs of tamper proof Torx, or, and, and some seal picks, but. I really don't have stuff at home because I don't fix anything at home. I do I do some little house repairs here. If not, I call and hire someone to come do it. Or I just go and buy what I need to do that job, just like I've done over, over the years. Can't tell you how many times I go to Home Depot and buy the same crap over and over for for plumbing jobs or small electrical jobs. Because I just don't feel like digging through my, my shed to find anything. But yeah, so somebody comment. Everybody comment. Let's, let's talk about this. Let me tell you how you, know, you feel. I will be devastated if I don't get another Snap-on tool dealer and I have to rely on mailing in my products. I am going to be beyond furious because I still live and breathe with my Snap-on tools every day. Can I survive with running my business off of Harbor Freight? Absolutely not. Um, it would annoy me going no different than this, the, the, the cordless stuff every three months sending it out and going to Harbor Freight every week for broken tools. I just won't do it. Their screwdrivers suck. Their cheaper wrenches suck. Um, there's a lot of things. Their, their lower line electrical and cordless stuff just sucks. But there's a lot of good stuff there too. Um, that's it. Uh, hopefully we don't see Snap-on go away. I would hope that they evolve. But if Snap-on winds up in Harbor Freight, right, what do they need tool trucks and all that stuff for? They can just be in Harbor Freight just like Sears went to Home Depot, you know. So you may see that happen, like, you're just going to go to Home Depot and you have Snap-on tools. You're going to have a warranty program in place uh, just like Sears. I don't know. Thanks for watching.